let's try to answer Jesus' question. In the time of Jesus, your place in society depended upon your honor, not your income or your style of dress or how many toys you had. Honor was public reputation and determined how you were treated in social life, such as where you sat at a banquet and whom you invited to your house. If you had money but lacked honor, you were called poor. The reverse was true. If you had no money but enjoyed a good reputation, you would be a person of honor. Dishonor was based on any physical, mental, or social anomaly, such as having a disability or being a widow without a son. Being poor meant that you did not have a place at the table. Being poor made people vulnerable, religiously, economically, politically, and domestically. In this social hierarchy, some fortunate people were on top and some below. Moving from poor to honorable was rare. As we've seen in other stories, Jesus criticized these arrangements, for they perpetuated injustice. By contrast, in the kingdom of God, justice and righteousness flow like a river. And Jesus' ministry and ours is all about bringing that kingdom into being. When the dinner guest says, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God, Jesus responds with a story that helps us better understand the qualities of that kingdom and the meaning of the word anyone. Notice that the first two people in our little skit make nonsensical excuses, and the third likely does not want to have to return the favor and invite the host to a later dinner. The host is angered by their rejection. They insult his honor by refusing relationship. Now the story could have stopped there, but instead expectations are reversed when the honorable and the wealthy host opens his door to the poor, to those who cannot reciprocate. He invites not only the poor, crippled, blind, and lame, but also those living outside the walls of the city, prostitutes, beggars, and thieves. He fills his house and breaks bread with those who will bring him dishonor. Jesus uses this story to show the dinner guest that anyone willing to accept the invitation can eat bread in the kingdom of God, not just those of the elite who seem to have the price of admission. The open invitation of the great dinner is for everyone who thirsts to come buy wine and milk without money and without price. As Isaiah 55 says, For in fact, what returns to the host, or the Lord of hosts, multiplies like, a, like the miracle of the bread and fish. As we hear in Isaiah 55, verse 11, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the fields shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. As we gather today in gratitude, remembering all we are and have from God, food, friends, family, we also gather grounded in who we are and whose we are, children of God, carers for creation, sharers in the abundance that is enough for all, and God's beloved to act in the world so that God's kingdom may come on earth.
Thanks be to God for the blessing of this day. Come, let's have a banquet. <laughs>